What's going on, Cigar Club family? Welcome to another Cigar Club podcast. I'm your host, David Pugh, and joining me, as always, is Griff Howie. And today, we're going to be talking about our top three underrated cigars. Griff, how you doing? It's Friday. It looks gorgeous there. It's gorgeous here. Pugh, I can't believe we're I'm feeling both it. outside. It is... I'm not lying. I think it's actually the nicest day we've had all year. It's 65, not a cloud in the sky, little breeze. Nope. Maybe I could do without the breeze when no clouds here, either. here, but it is gorgeous beautiful. outside. All right. What are we talking about? I'll repeat since you're not listening. Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Today, we're talking about our top three underrated cigars, and I put a little twist on it. I'm doing underrated cigars or like underappreciated. Ooh. Um, I guess maybe the same thing, but... Uh yeah. Before we get into that, what are you? The problem is you're, you're toasting I can't, up. I can't tell you what I'm toasting because this is my one of my three. I can't either. But the yeah. the, <laughs> the problem is that I've had zero sips of alcohol today. So, ooh. Well, crack us one open. Make while sure. you're doing that, cheers. Cheers. I've poured myself trying to kill this bottle. Heaven I thought that was a beer for a second. Bond. Good lord. That'd be a hell of a beer. Uh, so I'm trying to I'm trying to bottle kill this one over the next several days because it's been open for for too long. Um, mm. I'm excited about this. That's gonna be we're gonna be fired up. We were I I don't know. I think it's gonna be a great podcast. So I'll kick us off, and I'm gonna kick us off with what I'm smoking first, so I can smoke it and talk about it, Do it. as the sun creeps in. For me, one of my favorite cigars that I don't see enough people on Instagram talk about, social media, wherever it's at is the Smoking Jacket wow. Favoritos. I haven't had that cigar in eight months easily. I don't I, I don't see enough people like never. cigar people smoking them. Or, or you had it for the first time it. when you first started with us, right? Yeah, I had never had Smoking Jacket until I uh, started working. I don't think I really had anything out of KBF mm-hmm. um, until uh, until I started working for uh, with Cigar Club. But uh, this is out of the KBF factory in the Dominican Republic. Um, the uh, Hendrick Kellner Jr. is the master blender of this cigar. KBF is known for uh, all of the proprietary tobacco that they have with Davidoff. It's their farm that they do all their experimental tobacco with. I'm sure there's a bunch of other stuff that they do there. But I, I've talked about it numerous times. I think I could smoke anything from KBF for the rest of my life yeah. and be content. I just They have this... I think you're right, buddy. Twang I think to you're them right. that it's just delicious. But this one here, six by forty six, Dominican straight all the way through, and you can't beat it. Seven dollars a pop. Yeah, what? <laughs> Same farm that Davidoff uses, and it's a seven dollar stick. I know. Well, that's Easily. telling you something. Not to tell you, but mm. you know what I mean. I think I'm picking up what you're putting down. Are you picking it up? I picked it up. Yeah, I picked it up. But uh, yeah, if you haven't had anything from uh, Smoking Jacket. They've got a couple different variations, uh, limited editions as well, but uh, anything you pick up from them, you will not be disappointed about. And I want to see more people smoking smoking jacket, so I don't feel like it's underappreciated or undervalued. We, I can't remember. It was easily Pensacola for sure. Hell, it was probably actually when I first started, too, at Cigar Club. It was probably when the first couple of months that I had a cigar. And I, I have not seen it at this, any of the cigar shops here. Uh, my Mm-mm. Pensacola store had it. Actually, that's where I got it. So I've not seen it since. I gotta admit, I gotta take a pause here. Is that a water fountain in your back backyard? Is that the water it's, fountain? No, the it's a koi pond. Yeah. Unbelievable. I don't think I've seen that. Can before. you hear it? Slightly. Oh, I'm surprised. I mean, it's calming. Oh, it's calming as hell. It's it's the most. People calming. are gonna be driving in their car and falling asleep here in the, the waterfall. God, so back we there. we had it clean, professionally clean this weekend or this week. Sorry, a couple days ago. Tuesday, I think last this past Tuesday, and the guy was in there for six hours with his son. Ooh. It wasn't, I mean, it was dirty, but it wasn't like, you know, a swamp. We had to purge 12 fish. We were a little bit overpopulated. Oh, shit. By purge, you just mean move to another home? Over th- or was that on the Barbie o- that Over night? the fence. <laughs> uh, <laughs> just, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we threw him on the big green egg and cooked him up. Um <laughs> There we go. Luckily, my neighbor's got a koi, koi. koi pond, so I, I gave 12 to him. But we now have 17 koi and eight goldfish, I think. Do you give away, like, the youngest or the oldest? Like, because if I recall, koi can live Dealer's and choice. goldfish can live for Dealer's a really choice. Oh, just I just, I was like, yeah, he's going. He's ticking me off. He's going. 
Tim like Tim with that drunk being a real jerk in the tub you go <laughs> over the fence. Uh, yeah, so yeah, that thing is always on twenty four seven. Rain, snow, sleet, okay. hail, and uh, it, it's very calming, very peaceful. No wonder you're out there uh, with your solar stove. I, I didn't know. know you had a waterfall out there. What is that up? It's great. Um, We're gonna have to do like a crib style of your backyard for uh, for a I podcast it's, one episode. It's, uh, anytime I get heated, I just come on out. There it is. All right, first cigar on my underrated slash. I just don't think anyone really knows about it. It's not this. I mean, it is this, per, this one in particular, but it's really the brand itself. Jeremy Jack. Oh, where's the cello? I needed to see oh, yeah. the cello. So I kept the cello. I that thing was. Oh Jesus! So actually, it's, that it's looks... worse in person. But uh, any any Goodness. Jeremy Jack cigar you get, it's gonna look cell fans gonna look like this. Yeah, I don't know. What does he just make cigars and set some aside for the last years? batch we did with him? Which this is the JJ fourteen, the fourteen and the fifteen are both my favorites. I don't know honestly if I like one more than the other, but um, the last round we bought from him, I have to go back in my text thread. I, I swear to God, he said they've been aging for like seven years or something in this barn. He says, um, just, surely, just surely when I'm saying not. this, it's not seven, but I swear I, it was either four or seven years. Goodness, I mean, it explains the cello. The cello I could imagine is, smoking one of those fresh. It'd be ridiculous. Oh, I can't either. It'd blow you away. <laughs> all Agonors and tobacco. It's it's such a good cigar. Anybody that's it, had this, it, I think you could agree. It is. It's, it's great. It's so funny too because I completely agree with how good that cigar is. And yet, I didn't even think about to include it. That's how underrated and overlooked that well, cigar I was, is. I, also, I'm going through this whole like humidor purge process, and I'm not saying I'm purging this, but I'm like trying to pull stuff from the bottom to the top and the top to the bottom yeah. and recycle. A little rotate. And I had, a, f- I think it's a 14 Lancero in there. And then I saw this, which is like a Toro Gordo. Massive thing. Yeah, sure. And um, it's a big old boy. I'm right like, there. golly, I hadn't had Jeremy Jack and six months easily oh i think i've only smoked two cigars from jeremy jack and i have a couple it's just they're sitting at the bottom of the humidor. Yeah. i need to do a rotate he's got the libby lula the jeremy 14 the 15 the jj 23 uh it's it's just not a uh, it's underrated let's just say that are we talking about underrated cigars <laughs> we're going top three underrated cigars griff that's the that's jj the 14 the number one <laughs> underrated for me and uh, do you know the MSRP off the top of your head on mm. this? I, uh, so the the small bit of research I did prior to this, yeah, since I you. came so prepared, uh, a box. We appreciate that. A box of twenty, although this is uh, Lancero speaking, was uh, one eighty six. So single is about nine and a half bucks, and I'm, Which is I'm pretty right sure all his sizes these. are. Price the same, give or take. Yeah, um, and that's Agonors of tobacco, so that's nothing to. Yeah, it to is be concerned about. I mean, a, a good solid price. cigar. It's, and it's also hard to find them online. You can't really find them on the retail side either. So, it's um, if you can find it, get it. If you can buy them, buy them. Take that to the grave. Damn, damn. Hot take from Griff. Well, I'll roll into number two. For me, it's not. I don't know. I, I don't think this is one that's a hot take, per se. I think it's one that you'd be like, no, that's not. to shouldn't belong on the list, but we'll roll into it. To me, Caldwell Eastern Standard, yeah. specifically, you do like that. Or, or for me, the Euro Express size, yeah. it's just... The whole Caldwell line is fantastic. I, I don't see enough people talk or smoke about them before. I feel like maybe they've fallen off of the map over the other... The yeah, last it's few really years. interesting. You, I kind of agree. I've never had a Caldwell that I didn't love. Um, the Anastasia is wonderful. The Last Czar is fantastic. But for me specifically, as far as like a sleeper, is the Eastern Standard Euro Express. It's a, a five and a half by 44, which we all know we love that 44 ring gauge. Uh, it's got uh, Connecticut hybrid Ecuadorian wrapper, Dominican de binder. I mean, these are seed varietals that I've never seen before. Um, packed with uh, Habano, Dominican Habano, Seco, Criollo 98, Viso, and Corollo Lijero. Corollo. I mean, this thing is is got every tobacco probably ever planted. Well, it sounds like it. something he would and, do. 
it rolls in at ten bucks. Fantastic. I have not. We carried that. Uh, God, you know better than me now. Time is getting away. It's been. <laughs> it's, been it's been a very long time. I been, think it, before our, I was here last March. Really? I thought. Okay. Or if it was. I, I, I assume as everything these aware. days are a couple months, but clearly that's not. No. No, you probably think I've been working here for five couple years, months, not even a full year. Yeah, I got married a couple months ago. <laughs> feel like we moved in a couple months. It's called months. getting old. Time is and and I I blame the last two years. The last two years, I feel like they've been the longest years, but also the fastest years. I really so. hope twenty twenty two is going to be a good year. You know, you always say that at the start of the year, and it's never a good year. Yeah, well, we're hoping for it. We can only hope. I mean, it's been a, it's it's uh, it's looking up. Well, let's put it. it that can way. only look up from here. It's true. That's true. But we'll see. Well, with the top three underrated cigars, you turn it around. Top three underrated Caldwell Eastern Standard, folks. All right. I know you like this one a lot. Ooh. And which I we got? don't think you've had it probably since maybe we were together last. Well, not last, but at a point in time. Uh, and this was another one sitting at the bottom that I don't know why it was sitting at the bottom. So now it's at the top. Any guesses? I'm going to say Pachardo no. Familiar. Uh, New Orleans Cigar Factory Social Club, folks. Ooh. Hell yeah. Great freaking cigar. That is. And, uh, I think, didn't you? Didn't I've we, got a couple of those left. Didn't you have one when we were at the factory in New Orleans last time? Of course. Okay. Of course. I mean, I'm the reason. Well, let me face this. I'm not the reason. But I had talked about them prior to uh, us going there. I was really excited that we... we planned a trip out of there and and got uh their connecticut which is one of my favorite connecticut um, it's, in some of the boxes too. it's uh and this is a bigger robusto than i'm it's a fattier yeah, i think it's like a 54 it's a, yeah, yeah it's a fattier robusto than i'm used to um but yeah it is 54 and it's a it's a phenomenal cigar last time we were in new orleans pew and i and uh our team well i think we were smoking a little bit of everything but naturally we i did. think we grabbed a social club which i cannot tell you what makes social club different from their lines but it's a brazilian nicaraguan filler and a brazilian binder which i don't know it's maybe just maybe something that i don't smoke much of and that's why i like it mm-hmm. there was a god they have a lancero in that size that i think i gave to oh, jeff yeah. when we were there that was phenomenal yeah. i brought one home myself and i smoked it shortly after i got back from that trip and i was like damn that's killer it's a great cigar. Uh, everything they do out of there is really really good i mean I think all of their tobacco. I'm trying to remember where they get their tobacco from, but she it's told a large. Us that you know, I, I cannot remember to say. I can't remember, and I don't. And and uh, you know, so it's not like some homegrown guy that you know you've never heard of. This is the same tobacco that a large cigar manufacturer uh, uses on a daily basis. So the fact that they were able to get really good tobacco in speaks to why those cigars are as good as they are. And that's certainly a place that I will stop in every yeah. time I'm down in New Orleans. If you're ever in uh, New Orleans, great go to New Orleans Cigar Factory. Great selection. Yep. Get Social Club. And, great uh, humidor, and you get to watch them roll cigars uh, depending on when up, you're in there. If you're, there and yeah. start walking down Bourbon Street. Yes. Yes. Good you Which are, we're going to be doing in, a couple, in next month. Next month. Real soon. Going to return back there. Yeah. Those with a beignet and a, uh, some coffee from uh, Cafe Du Monde. That's how you start a morning. Yeah, that chicory coffee. Also, the sun's coming down, so I'm going to be getting lit up on the right side of my face. It's funny. It's coming down, and you can see it just slowly. If you're watching on YouTube, mm-hmm. it's just slowly creeping up my face. I'm not going to be able to be able to see here soon, but uh, hey, that's, how's that the same beer? sun is providing me light, and it's providing you in a different state. That's, wow. Wow. We share the same sun? That's what they tell us. That's what they tell us. How's the Michelob Ultra pairing Dude, with the JJ? Michelob Ultra pairs with anything. It does. No, it no, absolutely no, does. It's disgusting. No, it's disgusting. I don't, listen, this is where you and I... I wouldn't even pour that on the koi. Well, I wouldn't either because it would probably kill them, but, <laughs> but they would probably actually love it. Um, this is Let's the thing. Water. You like... Don't you like lower-proof bourbons or are you more a high-proof guy? No, I, I, the whole spectrum, but I do prefer a high-proof. All right. Well, never mind about that. My, that my thought. Yeah, you're about to roast me. I ain't going to let you. But listen, the, you, the beers you drink, they're horrible. They're not even beers. Listen. Listen here. You're wrong. You're wrong. Pew drinks the cotton candy Jolly Rancher, 18%. I'll take two sips and I'm like laying down. I'm so drunk. 9,000 no. calories, 1,800 no. carbs. 
and it's about five liters big. I'm sitting up. I'm sitting up. I'm going to defend myself. <clears throat> Just like bourbon, I last week I crushed a case of Miller Lite. Miller Lite's great, and you can't hate Miller on Mick Ultra. Great. No, Mick Ultra tastes like Bud Light, and that's disgusting. Well, Bud Light's even better than Mick Ultra, so we got problems. <laughs> Cans or bottles? Cans for every beer. Really? Every beer. Bottles are overrated. If you're drinking beers out of the bottle, get out of here. There's something about a cold Miller Lite out of a bottle that drinks colder yeah, than Yeah, if you like tasting bloody pennies. <laughs> okay. that's what. See, that's what Bud Light tastes like to me. <laughs> Drink it and think of bloody pennies, and you'll never drink it again cans get but colder defense, cans get colder they stay colder they're better for the earth fair enough you win on that one however i'll drink a nascar beer and i'll drink a quad ipa i'll drink the spectrum What's, i like beer is that what you call them nascar beers i never heard this term yeah yeah i call them nascar beers bud light sense, yeah. budweiser miller light Budweiser's too heavy. ultra yeah, oh, God. I was at my brother's, and I'm going there after this. He, his buddy got him the uh, Coors Banquet, the Yellow Jackets. Very mm. good beer. And I'm not usually a Coors those guy. Those are very good. Yeah, those are really good. But uh, uh, there's always Mick Ultra in the fridge. Mm-mm. It, it's 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 easy. It's it's literally. I mean, like, I get it. It's I get drinking it. I'm flavored, not going to roast you for it. It's beer flavored water. I mean, that's why I drink Miller Lite. Uh, I'll give it to you. I drank a cor- a regular Coors Light the other day after not drinking it since college because I just hated it after then. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. I mean, the mountains are blue. Anywho, I guess we should get back on topic. I'll fight anybody these days that drink beers out of a bottle. Did you tell us you're number two? Uh, y- yes. Social, social give club. Give us a recap. I had to think social about club. It. There it is. There's the recap. <laughs> Well, here we are. Let's open another. Uh, let's get another pour here. We are going for the bottle kill, right? Can we do? A, can we turn this into like a version of drunk history, but with cigars? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> Is that the new segment? Yep. All right. So also, I've got two, I've got two more. So I did like four total, but oh shit! Well, I'm gonna have to think of a, a fourth no, one. No, it's okay. Thanks, Griff. That's all right. Yeah, it's okay. You, you came prepared, obviously. Coming in at number three for me, and this is in no particular order. Um, this is a cigar that was given to me, and I instantly kind of turned my nose on uh, up to it uh, initially due to the name and the line of the cigar mm. and i was just told shut up and smoke it interested and i will who told you try that? everything twice what's that who told you to shut up and smoke it uh a good friend of mine shout out jake oh. he was a la Polina rep and then moved oh. over uh to general i'm intrigued and it's the uh and he knew what i like you know and and i trusted his palate and his opinion so i listened to him and it's the macanudo inspirado white robusto it's a uh, Ecuadorian, Connecticut, Indonesian binder with Nicaraguan and Mexican San Andreas filler, coming in at a wonderful price of seven dollars and thirty six cents. You can't beat it. This the price. cigar, no, the price you cannot. I grew up thinking my dad managed a liquor store and they had you know a, a shitty humidor with you know your gross cigars that no one done smoked. Yeah, and to me, Macanudo just. Pulled the imagery of a Macanudo Crystal Cafe, Crystal Cafe, which there's nothing wrong with those. They are probably one of the best-selling cigars on the market. But it just, uh, I didn't invoke this sense of wanting to smoke it. So this is where he's like, shut up and smoke it. This isn't your dad's Macanudo from the 90s. And boy, was he right. This cigar with a morning cup of coffee, a latte, it just stupid good and mm. i think because of the maybe the macanudo name or or maybe people just still have that association with macanudos being something from the 90s uh they've turned it around i love the band on it i love the uh imagery that they've got around it the marketing around it and the cigar is i would put it up there with with some of the best my favorite connecticut's it wonderful. i need to get a like god yeah, I hate when that happens. A little tobacco on the lips? Yeah, a little tobacco on the tongue. Um, yep. I need to get <clears throat> a solid, like, which I kind of, I guess I have three, but three consistent go-to Connecticut's that I always have stocked up. Because Connecticut's are yep. never in my humidor. No. Usually, I, Which usually. makes sense. You're not usually a... Uh... No, I'm a high proof, although when it comes to beer, I'm just complete opposite. Full, full, uh, full body cigar, highest of the high proof bourbon. Low beer, low beer, very low beer. Well, I mean, if you're if you're crushing uh, a twenty four pack, 
I mean, I, like. I can't say that I'm, I'm that. Uh, I don't go that hard, but oh, um, <clears throat> neither do surely I. you don't. I do a couple oh. of these, and then I start leading into. I plan out the bourbon. I'm going to start low, work my way up, and then work my way down, and that's the transition. Well, I'll. Uh, geez, I got a spider joining us here. Uh, I'll put Almost. together a top three must-have Connecticut's for you, and, and you keep at least one or two of those. Do you, I mean, do you smoke? I don't think I've ever seen you smoke a cigar and have coffee. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I have, and I really like it, but uh, I just tend to go straight to liquor or beer. At 8 o'clock in the morning? All right there, Griff. <coughs> Confessions. <laughs> Confession on a Friday. You can start up your... <clears throat> oh, God. Cut this out. <clears throat> Check one. All right, we're back. Back to it. Griff's alive, folks. Uh, had a little uh, technical difficulties of the uh, the lungs there. Yep, lungs but, and esophagus. But my three out of four, which I know, I think you like this cigar. I was introduced to this cigar, I guess, kind of when I started working here. And maybe the best, which I'd like your thoughts. Ooh, I don't have really. it with me. One of the best uh, cigars to have with coffee. From our good friends at Villiger Cigars. Oh, I know where you're going. The Villiger, technically, Queller Cream. Yes. If the name is Cream, number one, you better That's taste cream. cream. And number two, it better pair with true. coffee. And both and, of those are checked. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it could I be one of like the most mild cigars. I mean, I'm sure there's probably milder, but it, it could be one of the most mild cigars that I actually enjoy. And yeah. it... I think that speaks to how good that cigar is because no other cigar that mild, I guess. I mean, for lack of better words, it's it's mild in strength, but it's not mild in flavor. Uh -uh. That cigar is speaks to that speaks to just how good that cigar is. The fact that you like that as much when we as were with Hector down in Miami earlier last year, which I'm also excited because they, they've since recently opened up their Nicaraguan factory. He gave mm -hmm. me the uh, Claro, one of their Claros. That was basically the cr the Nicaraguan cream, mm -hmm. uh, since the Nicar the cream is from the DR, and um, it, it was hard to kind of decide which one was better. But that cream line, and it's like four dollars. It's something it, outrageous. It's, Not four dollars, but it's you know ridiculous. What I mean. It's the, uh, a, a, you, a box of twenty is right now on Holtz is. 80 bucks. I mean, what's the math? Death. That's a church hill, too. <laughs> I think my biggest complaint with that cigar is I just want them to add a little touch to the label. And maybe that's part oh, yeah. of it is no, I of why it's affordable. I agree. All of their other bands, I absolutely love. They've done a really good job of designing, um, like the new Libertad bands look fantastic. Yeah, we also have an exciting this one and just I can't needs, think of the name, but we got an exciting one coming up in a couple months. Um, it starts oh, with, it's the, like, the Maduro? No, no, I didn't think so. It was like starts with a C or something. He, um, I, I can't remember the name of it. Not I'll the Maduro. It. Maybe it Fill was a Maduro. In. Fill us in. I'm looking it up, but I'm pretty sure it is a Maduro. Fill the air. Uh, but yeah, that one, if they would just add a little bit of love to that one, yeah, just the band of it, I think it would just put it up into... I don't want them to charge more for yeah, it, but, but it would put it to the next I level. I think that opens up a whole other conversation of... Which maybe is a whole other conversation podcast-wise, but... I used to, and it can go the same with bourbon, go the same with wine. I used to judge cigars by their bands. Oh, absolutely. I don't love Jimmy Jack by bands. Cover. Nothing against him. Nothing against his cigars. I don't love his style bands. Just smoke the damn thing. Mm -hmm. And if you don't yeah. like it, tear it off. But I think I, when I started drinking wine, uh, I would always go to like, what's the coolest label, right? The pig or the the draft with the a jumping duck, jack head. The decoy duck on there <laughs> yeah. or, yeah. you know, uh, the big elephant or whatever it is. Um, it's the same with cigars. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get better about judging a book by its cover just because the band is not your taste. If the reviews are solid, it. it's probably a solid cigar. And, uh, yeah, this one I'm excited about. It is a Maduro, but it's not like a, a full-bodied Maduro. But uh, the Villager Cabarete. That was it. I told you to start with a C. We're going we're gonna to roll with that one. I um, did not know it was a Maduro, though. Yeah, it's a Maduro, but it comes in at a, a medium body, so it's not going to be anything that's going to push 
push you to the extreme, but that one's super excited about. I'm really about excited to get that one in boxes because it's got like extra age to it. And uh, he reached out to Hector, reached out to us. He's like, hey, this has been aging yeah. for for uh, many years, 19 years, and in in on it. <laughs> it, it can almost uh, legally drink. So that'll be that'll be fun one to uh, to get some more boxes. I can't think of a fourth one. You you really threw a curveball on me, hmm. and we're gonna have to do like a strike through I can three and a half. All right, give us a number four. And I really was thinking about you on this one because um, oh, thank you, not because of the name, because that'd be weird. But um, I don't think you give this brand enough attention, and you've said it before, and I feel like sometimes I beat a dead horse. Uh oh. It's because I love it so much. Do you have any idea where I'm going with this? Is it Oliva? No. No, I'm interested. Oh. I'm surprised you said that. I don't have it. Uh, I thought I had one. I smoked the last one. I don't have it with me, but it's the uh, it's the HVC hotcake, folks. Oh! <laughs> I just, that yeah. cigar is. It's. I, I agree. There's no words, actually. And heck, guess what? That's a perfect tie-in. That's coming to some boxes. Uh, I know. I can't wait to snag some soon. of those. I, there. I, I am too because I do agree. I talk about all the time how much I need to smoke HVC more. I think we shit. I think we talked about it last podcast. Yeah, it, and uh, uh, it, it hits, it hits my palate for perfect more on the full body side, but nothing like mm-hmm. crazy. San Andreas wrapper, mm-hmm. Aganors tobacco. Like you ugh. can still smoke those cigar, the hot cakes, morning, afternoon, or night. Yeah, and if you're smoking in the morning, you just pair it. You know, with something that's going to maybe even it out, make it a little bit more approachable first thing in the morning. The band is unreal. The name is amazing. And Rainier is a beast. Yeah. That's all right. So add that to my bucket list of our, our 2022 goals. Have you goals. actually had hotcake, though? Yes, I've had hotcake number four. Oh, okay. Uh, but I think I've only smoked it once. HVC Cero is probably my favorite HV cigar that I've ever smoked. Uh, again, I think. Really, to round that out, the whole HV, HVC line, I honestly, uh, I can safely say I think that I've never seen HVC in any of the brick and mortars I've gone into. No. Nope. I haven't either. And I've, I, whenever I travel, I always pick out one or two local brick and mortar shops to go into, buy one cigar, even if I have them at home. I love, one of my favorite things is just go support like know, a local scene. Too. And uh, yeah, I don't think I've ever seen HVC in the humidor. The HVC 500 yeah. that we shipped out a Kicker. few months ago, banger of a stick. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so good. And that 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 cigar and the Cerro, we're like, all right, I, I, I need I, to get more in line with these. Th- there's not honestly, there's not one cigar in his line that I can truthfully say that just doesn't that I don't enjoy. Everything, Pan Caliente, Cerro, Serie A, um, Black Fridays, Black Black Fridays. <laughs> Uh, I smoked. I smoked a lot of those over the last few months. San Isidro, they're just mm-hmm. they're killer. I don't think and, I need yeah. to harp on that. No, no, we don't. And uh, uh, just to me, probably one of the most Cuban X brands with everything that they produce. Yeah, and he's just so legit. Yeah, you've have you met him in person? I assume yeah. you met him at TPA. Or yeah, we have met you him been at TPA down there? and down in Miami and down in Miami. Just a heck of a guy, salt of the earth, and he just seems a it. freaking gangster i bet he'd come on a podcast i think that'd be a blast yeah i'd have to i'd have to walk you back you'd be a little too uh fangirly over him <laughs> oh, I, I already got my picture with him so it's fine oh there you go there you go well, he, gave, your, he uh, gave me a a uh a black friday like 9 a.m that one morning we met with him and that'll start your day off geez. on the right foot <laughs> i don't know i, I, I think my stomach that. was empty i'm like all That's right time terrible. to go slam a, a bacon egg and cheese biscuit <laughs> Oh god, that was awesome. Yeah. That was awesome. Black Friday, first thing in the morning. I don't think I could stomach that. It so, wake up. There's Griff's top four underrated cigars. My top three. You know what we have to do now? In, uh, another podcast. What we got to do? Oh, top overrated. Three overrated. overrated cigars. <laughs> I know. Which is a little dicier because yeah, I don't want to step on any toes. Well, maybe it's it, like it's, overhyped. It's I, I'm, like, I'm trying to. My mo is is overrated cigars i feel like i always feel like i'm talking about or we talk about a cigar and i think it's overrated so also i think we need to start looping in some bourbon talk to this 
I, like we could have down. if we had prepped for this. We underrated, could've. underrated cigars and bourbon. Overrated cigars and bourbon. Because I got I mean, a list I could, of. I could quickly throw it in real quick. <laughs> overrated, what you have, and nah, uh, get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here uh, I, I've got some strong thoughts and opinions on on the bourbon side of the house too. Yeah, I think that'd be fun. Maybe maybe we'll uh, maybe we'll loop that into the next one, and uh, I'll quickly throw out to me my underrated bourbon, and that is very old Barton bottled in bond. Hadn't had it. Now I now I say it out loud. Now I'm con- now now I'm concerned. I got it wrong. <laughs> oh God! You really you can't no, it do is. that. It is. It's well, V-O-B-B-I-B. You, have a hot take. you gotta go full at it. All right. Well, well I just maybe I maybe I got the brand name wrong. No, it's V O B. Bottled and Bond. Even if it was fantastic. wrong, no one would care. Listen here. There's some guy going, Pew. Pew doesn't know what he's talking about. He's an idiot. I lose all reputation. I mean, there's so much talk Can't right now in Can't general over the last months, of, shit, over the last years of overrated bourbon. I think that could be a 19-hour yeah. discussion in itself. But I've gotten to the point, like, I drink, like, there's like three or four bottles that are my consistent, and that's it consistent yeah. go-to's i'm like i don't know what the hell i'm gonna do with all this other stuff i guess it looks cool on the shelf but three or four and and that's it no no yeah, they're no. open oh okay, i'm just gonna like, start pawning them off like people come over yeah drink that it's real good and just try to nah. get rid of it griff why aren't you drinking it um i was saving it all for yeah, you something's f- saving it for a special occasion like this i will go ahead and say another one but it's local so i don't know if that really counts is it local <laughs> Eh. You can't hate on the small guys, but who is it? Oh, no, it's underrated. I mean, it's oh. my favorite bourbon ever. It's John the bottle or... I... No, it's AASW. Oh, yeah, uh, I agree. Fiddler. I, yeah. I could drink that. Yeah. I mean, I do. Like, I literally, oh, I want a bourbon tonight? I'm looking through. Looking For through. 40, like, 45 right, bucks? No, no problem. Yeah. I don't want a high proof. I don't want a high proof. Uh, we'll go for the Fiddler. And, and I think I drank yeah. more of that over the last year than anything else. I do like it a lot. It's... I just, I'm like, everything's got to be kind of 100 plus these days in proof. Yeah. Because otherwise I just, I don't enjoy it as much. Well, I certainly, be, uh, I don't know. I did the same. I I was just drinking like 120 plus proofs. I mean, there's a get, time and place neutral for, to it. Yeah, I know. And it's probably not good for you. No, no, it can't be. Because I would, I would drink it like I was drinking 90 proof or like yeah, an 80 proof I bourbon. Know. And then a couple of those, you're like, oh. I should have There's done been that. times I've been drinking, you know, whatever it is, 127, and I'm like, I, I my heart is actually burning right now. <laughs> it's yeah, we may see a doctor about that one. It's just like, yeah, probably. It, uh, it surely can't be good for you, but you know what? Well, it is what it is. Uh, anything exciting coming up for you before we uh, we wrap this up? No, excited for all the future conversations. Let us know. What you want to see Doofus and I talk about, dive into. <laughs> I hadn't wor- I hadn't used the word doofus in a while. Throw that one back in there. Uh, no, it's going to be great. Excited to continue the conversations with Mr. Pew. God, that really got you. I don't think I've heard the word doofus in like 30 years. Yeah, it's probably been a good 20 for me, so might as well break it back out. Oh, man. Well yeah uh i think uh in the comments below if you're on youtube uh if you're not on youtube shoot us a message on instagram or any of the social medias let us know if there's any podcast topics that you'd like us to talk about uh any cigars you'd like for us to talk about or try bourbons whatever it is we're always open for suggestions and we will certainly have to do uh some form of overrated or maybe overhyped talked about cigars and bourbons for a a future podcast but thank you all for joining us again for another cigar club podcast i'm david Pugh. That's Howie. Howie. Thanks for joining us. Happy smoking. Peace.